deltas. Aren't they fun? This printer is actually bought by you guys, the Patreon who helped fund this printer. More about that later. So is this the delta of your dreams, of your fantasies, the one and only? I guess we just have to find out. Let's get going. So the Micromag DIY Delta 3D printer Costal, whatever it's called, <laughs> it's called D1, Micromag D1. It's a, a fairly cheap and simple uh, kit printer. It comes with a 1.75 millimeter Bowden extruder, equipped with a J head hot end, uh, where you also have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. You have a build volume that is 180 by 300, so 180 in circular and then a 300 in height. We have a Micromake version 2 board, which is actually based on the Arduino Mega 2560. It has a heated bed with a glass plate, so I mean, that's pretty good. It also has some auto leveling, but I mean, as you can see, I've done some changes to that. We'll talk more about that later. So the basic build of the machine is actually pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple, mainly due to its aluminium profiles and the injection molded parts. It all comes together quite easily. I actually made a few videos about that. If you want to check that out, they are pretty long, but it's pretty fun if you enjoy watching that, especially if you need to follow along when you're, if you want to build one yourself. Speaking of that, there's a great PDF, but it's well, maybe I shouldn't say great, but there's a PDF where you get all the instructions. There's also some official videos from Micromake and there's a good Facebook group if you run into any issues. I know there are some variations. Some printers don't have the heated bed. Some printers don't have, uh, some printers have linear rails instead of the cards. So there's a few versions and of course they are also priced differently. So yeah, again, the printer is around 200 to $300 depending on sales and everything like that. But yeah, the, the building is, is pretty fun. You can have it done in a few hours. There's no soldering needed. Although you might want to be able to, uh, to do that when it comes to the auto leveling. We'll, we'll talk even more about that later. So the build quality. Well, I mean, the frame and all is, is pretty, pretty nice, all the parts and the electronics and such, but it is quite flimsy. I mean, it's not really stuck and, and you can't really over tighten the, the rods here even more. I would wish a little bit more for, uh, for some of the build quality, but then again, it's a very cheap printer. I also needed to uh, oil this up to try to reduce the sound, but there are some vibrations and sound. Uh, so it's not the most quiet printer, it, it rattles a little bit. Especially if you don't have it on a soft supported plate. You can see here I took a plate and I took some just padding under it and that really lowered the, the sound volume. Uh, the sound don't travel otherwise. There's no like feet to help reduce the sound. So that's a good tip if you want to make your own delta a little bit more quiet. The Micromake D1 comes with, or not comes with, it's made to use uh, Cura 15.04, but of course it works with the new ones as well, as long as you put in the data. I'm using Simplify 3D and I find that to be super simple. There's some profiles in like community and something that I think you can download directly from Simplify right now. Uh, and it works great, it's a great base. You don't need to do that many modifications. It is a Bowden drive, so playing around with the retraction depending on which filament you use is a really good idea. And other than temperature, I didn't really have to change anything at all to get good results, like the vases in vase mode, for example, standard, super simple, but they're doing it great. So that, that's one of the, the good things about the software. The onboard display and the control mechanism, they're pretty simple. It's nothing that will surprise you at all. It uses a SD card as well, so you're up and going really fast. You can, of course, use the USB as well. Oh, and yeah, about the electronics, I mounted my power supply here. There's no protection for it, so there's no enclosure. It's just the standard power supply. The connectors are exposed down here. Uh, I had to take my own EU plug because it came with an American plug, so I needed to fix my own. It's, it's okay. <laughs> it's not the best solution. It's not the most prettiest. So maybe you could make some cover for this. I know there's third party ones, uh, I think of yours. And the power connector for the heated bed, it's all all right, it's all from the plate. You could of course benefit of using external MOSFETs. They're pretty cheap. If you're comfortable doing that, just add one of those and you'll be fine. So before you start printing with one of these machines, um, you need to do some calibration. Mainly it's promised to be a auto leveling. And to be honest, it works like rubbish, as you can see. It, it, the construction is not firm enough to be able to push to push everything up. Um, as soon as you do that, it just it doesn't work. It works on a on a really like it works on the same spots. If you level by just putting in, in one direction, that works. But as soon as you want to go uh, around, 
when you push at some angles since that is all offset that means that you're getting really weird results over the bed so um, I would have a, a really good level bed at some point but one of the corners is just completely off now it works printing you can do uh, the manual leveling and that works great but I mean we're promised auto leveling so looking around that's not an experience that just I am having there's plenty of groups, plenty of people having the same issues, and there are a lot of different solutions. You can see that I chose a fall down auto leveling um, thing. That's, <laughs> I'm not sure what you call it. It uses the same end stop that came stock. All you need to do is just extend the cable a little bit. Or just, and you also have to flip the triggering of that switch in either firmware or by soldering it. And this is where the soldering came in that I was talking about before. So I, I did it the soldering part. I think that was just easier than going in and updating the firmware and all. But you can do it either way. This in combination with a software called OpenDact, created by um, Roly Roland. I think that's his name. That program takes in all the data, like the, the rod lengths and everything, and it, it helps you crunch the numbers to like get the spherical of the machine and all the mechanics correct. And then you can use that in combination with your leveling, and it will actually improve itself over time doing several iterations to improve the, um, the precision of the machine. So that's a really, really good tool to use. And I really recommend to use that even if you want to go stock leveling. It really helps getting the precision into the machine and getting some really good uh, results actually. And after that calibration with OpenDact, it works like a charm. Printing, I know you've been waiting for that. Now it doesn't do anything revolutionary out of the box. It's not a completely reinvented machine and creates perfect prints every time. It is, however, good. It's 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 more than decent. I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say that it's superb, but it has some some good quality, and I think that it's totally worth the money when it comes to printing quality. Uh, we'll talk more about value and stuff like that in a second. But yeah, the print's good. You could have some um, C banding or C vibrations when you come up to thicker layers. So, for example, this model is not the best when it comes to the uh, the thicker parts. Um, like. The thick layers i think this is 0.27 or something so it's getting good results with the materials that i'm pushing through so pla works fine uh, ptg works good as well you might need to adjust your temperatures of course and maybe some retractions but yeah you can do that it can print cpu but i'm having some variations in experience it's not the best but it works especially if you lower the speed and try not to use any retractions at all other than that, other variations of PLA, like the PLA Wood works great as well, and PLA Matte um, from, from Type A machines. <laughs> I did try some ABS, but I mean, it's, it, it has a heated bed, but the heat dissipates like everywhere. So uh, without a full enclosure, um, which is kind of difficult to, to make, I would say that I don't recommend you to print anything big in ABS, because as soon as you get up a little bit, it's gonna form cracks in the, in the parts. So. Not for ABS, but for most other cold plate materials, even though it has a heated plate. But I would suggest that the heated plate is to stabilize the models and reduce trickier materials that would otherwise be hard in a cold machine. But it's not for like full on ABS printing. So yeah, other than that, the printing gets a total pass. It's, it's okay quality, but it's not the best. And again, it's a kit. So, I mean, you could probably improve it and mod it and get it really fine tuned start replacing parts like getting a bone extruder getting another hot end all of that can be done feel free to do it but i'm not going to do it with this machine so how is it to own this machine well you should know that deltas they use all motors at once they use the extrusion they use the 
yeah, all four motors, three. They use all four motors at once. It creates a very unusual sound if, if you're used to Cartesian machines or the, the regular X and Y working machines, where you have one motor working the X, one working the Y, and occasionally you have the Z motor going. But usually that's two motors plus the stepper or, or the extruder, which is usually very quiet. But here you have three motors working in tandem all the time. Not tandem, trio, tandem? I don't know what it's called. But they work all the time in extrusion as well. So this is highly personal, of course, but it's not as comfortable to listen uh, for longer runs. So again, if you have the plate and you put something soft under it, that helps stabilize the sound a little bit. And also changing the material is a little bit tricky. Uh, there's no good tool to do that. You have to heat the extruder, then you have to manually move the extruder motor and feed it out. And then you have to unscrew the, the uh, filament lever to like drag out the material. So it's, I, I find it a little bit tricky. Servicing the hot end though is, is very easy. You, I mean, you can just plug out the, the PTFE tube here or the Bowden tube. And you can also um, get onto the drive gear very easily because it's exposed already. So that, that's very nice. The build plate, however, it requires three screws to detach. So I wouldn't recommend that this is like a detachable print bed. Of course you can detach it, but don't do that every time. I find it by just leaving it for like 20 minutes, it, the plate cools down and that, that pops off the models. It works almost every time. And also, I mean, moving this print around is, is really easy. I, d I haven't had to do any calibration, moving it up and down, pulling it in different directions. So I, I find it a really good stable construction as soon as you have like tension all the screws, of course. Uh, you could use some Loctite if you want to do that, but that's totally up to you. So, so that's really good that after you've done the, cal the uh, initial calibration, it actually holds itself very good together. Compared to other machines that as soon as you move them, you kind of screw everything up. I don't like that at all. So that's very nice. And I'm, I've been moving this machine from this table down to the ground, into the closet, on the shelf, all around the place. So to conclude this machine, I have to say that I wouldn't recommend this as your first printer. And that's because the the, the troubles and, and the problems that you can experience when it comes to the auto leveling. It, it says auto leveling, but it doesn't really work that good as auto leveling. So um, yeah, if, if you're up to it, I mean, please go ahead, but I, I wouldn't recommend this as your first ever experience with a 3D printer. Although it could be your first Delta printer. I don't see any reason why not choose this one as your first Delta experience ever. And uh, yeah, you, you get a little bit taller volumes. It's not gigantic, but uh, at the time of the release of this, 300 millimeter tall prints were pretty good. So yeah, <laughs> again, the, the printing is good. The assembly and everything is, is fairly simple, except for calibration. There's no like remarkable features in it, anything like that, but I think it's a very decent Delta. It's not the best, although I've only tried this one, but I've, I've experienced other Deltas. If it's the best for its price, I wouldn't be able to tell you either. I think you have to make your own opinion. Um, but be aware of the calibration struggling, I would say, the first few times, and then it's pretty easy, but yeah. And I mean, as with any other kits as of date, you do need to be hands-on, you need to have some patience, you need to do some calibration, you need to experience the printer. And I think that's, that shouldn't stop you at all. And I think that if that's what you're into, this is a, a good choice, especially if you are interested into learning about printers, learning about deltas, playing around with firmwares, or just modding it, getting more features and more quality out of your, your uh, investments. So all of that is something that I really like and, and I value experiencing that. Uh, having a machine that's kind of hands-on, which is why this video is way too late. So speaking of getting a printer, this printer is gonna get to one of you. Um, I don't need it anymore. And so if you're a patron uh, before the 1st of July, 2018, then you are automatically draw, uh, into the draw. So every, let's say, dollar that you contribute with will be equal to one ticket in the, in the lottery and in the draw. So there's some really nice patrons, you can see them rolling down here. They have been supporting this product from the beginning and they, some of them have been patrons for a very long time and con contribute a lot of, uh, uh, to get this machine up here for you guys. So if you wanna have a chance to get this, I recommend checking out the patron down below 
uh, you can read all about the community 3D printer, which is a printer that we get together, and then one of you guys will get it, and that's, that's based on the Patreon. Uh, you can read all about that down below. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if there's any questions, any thoughts, anything you think I missed, anything that you're wondering, what else you want to know about 3D and technology and printing and scanning and all that kind of fun stuff that I like to do. Check out the links down below, it will help you find this machine if you want to check it out. Uh, find articles on my website where you can learn more about the materials and the printer. You will also find some affiliate links for different suppliers when it comes to everything locally for you. What else is there? Not so much. So again, thank you so much. Check out the other videos, other reviews. There will be some video boxes around here. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.